In the last episode we took a closer look at Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system, but it's the four large moons that orbit Jupiter that are really amazing and special worlds themselves. In this video we will take a closer look at these moons and find out why they are so special, so if you're ready explorers, let's go. <laughs> Jupiter is the fifth planet in the solar system and the Jovian system is like its own miniature solar system by itself. Jupiter is the largest planet and a planet this big has a tremendous gravitational pull. Locked into orbits around Jupiter are 79 moons. Most of these moons are most likely asteroids from the asteroid belt. These asteroids most probably got too close to Jupiter at some point in its history and the immense gravity of the gas giant captured them. They could also quite possibly be smaller objects from a larger object that broke apart sometime in the solar system's past and got captured by Jupiter's gravity. But it's the four large moons, Io, Europa, Ganymede and Callisto that are so special. Discovered by Galileo Galilei in January 1610 when he pointed his telescope at Jupiter, he noticed four points of light in orbit around the gas giant. These four moons would easily be naked eye objects in the night sky if it wasn't for the intense glare that comes from Jupiter itself. The discovery of these four moons was proof that not everything in the solar system orbited the Earth, but in fact the planets themselves orbited the Sun, and so came the birth of heliocentrism, the idea that the Earth and the other planets orbited the Sun at the centre of the solar system. In honour of Galileo's discovery, these four moons are now known as the Galilean moons. So why then are these moons so special? Over the years the Jovian system has been studied a lot through observations from here on Earth, from various space telescopes like Hubble, and from spacecraft visiting the Jovian system like Juno. These observations have yielded some very interesting and exciting results. It is widely believed that Europa, Ganymede and quite possibly Callisto all have liquid water oceans locked away deep below the surfaces of the moons. The interiors of Europa and Ganymede are kept warm by tidal friction and tidal flexing from Jupiter and the other moons as they orbit around the gas giant. These moons are stretched, pulled and squeezed by the intense gravitational forces of the Jovian system. To put this into perspective, think about what happens when you bounce a tennis ball on the floor. The ball hits the floor and bounces back up. In doing this, the tennis ball is squashed, squeezed and distorted as it hits the floor and returns to its original shape again after it bounces back into the air. If this process is repeated over and over, the tennis ball becomes warm due to friction. Think about when you rub your hands together. Again, they warm up due to friction. As Io, Europa and Ganymede orbit around Jupiter, the intense gravitational pull of Jupiter and the Galilean moons squeeze and stretch these moons. These constant distortions build up friction and therefore heat. Callisto orbits too far out from Jupiter to have any effect gravitationally on the other three moons. This tidal friction and tidal flexing warms the interior of the moons and keeps the ice located deep within the moon melted as water, creating a subsurface ocean. Europa and Ganymede are made up of mostly silicate rock and ice. Below the surface of these moons are layers of silicate rock that create the moon's mantle. This silicate rock is the same as the silicate rock here on Earth. On the seabeds of some of the oceans here on Earth, the silicate rock interacts with the ocean water to produce a number of mineral salts. These include sodium chloride, which is table salt. If the subsurface oceans on Europa and Ganymede interact with the silicate rock mantle the same way silicate rock interacts with the seabeds here on Earth, then it is entirely possible that the subsurface oceans on Europa and Ganymede are salty. This is incredibly important and a very big deal indeed. Life on Earth is believed to have started in the salty oceans three and a half billion years ago. Wherever there is liquid water found on our planet, there is life in some regard. If life started in our salty oceans, could there be life on Europa and Ganymede too? It is believed you need three ingredients to spawn life as we know it. These ingredients are liquid water, an energy source, either light or chemical, and organic compounds. Scientists believe that Europa has all of these ingredients in abundance. The Galileo spacecraft found hydrogen peroxide on the surface of the small icy moon. Hydrogen peroxide is a great source of chemical energy and would be an efficient source of energy for life. When mixed with water, the chemical reaction releases oxygen and produces a lot of energy. Through observations from Galileo, we know that the surface of Europa is constantly changing. Water from deep inside the moon wells up through the surface ice through cracks and creates the interesting surface features that make Europa such an amazing world. The hydrogen peroxide found on the surface could easily find its way through these cracks into the subsurface ocean. These dark cracks on the moon's surface contain salt and it is believed they contain organic compounds too, the third ingredient needed to spawn life. Europa has everything it needs to spawn life, we just need the proof now. We know that life can exist in the most extreme environments our planet has to offer, and these organisms are known collectively as extremophiles. So if these extremophiles can endure these incredibly hostile environments, then they could very well endure the harsh environments of these subsurface oceans, 
locked away on Europa and Ganymede. To think that this is possible is incredibly exciting and I really hope we find the proof of this during my lifetime. This is why the European Space Agency and NASA are currently working on missions to explore the Jovian system in more detail. In 2022, the European Space Agency are hoping to launch the Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer spacecraft. This mission will study Europa, Ganymede and Callisto in more detail. A year later, NASA hoped to launch the Europa Clipper mission to study Europa. These are very exciting times indeed, and hopefully these two missions will give us a more clearer understanding of Jupiter's moons and hopefully unlock the mysteries of whether life exists in the Jovian system. Over the coming episodes in this series, we will take a closer look at each of the four Galilean moons in more detail. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like. It really does help the channel out. And if this is your first time here, consider subscribing and I'll catch you next time.